Hello, and welcome to SR Experts Tech Talks. My name is Mike Mangino, and I work for Nokia's Network Infrastructure Division. We're here to talk technology today with our experts. And as usual, if you have any questions after the talk, feel free to reach out to your Nokia representative. Hi, my name is Peter Landon. I am a product manager with NSP, and today I'd like to spend a few minutes with you to talk about the benefits of NSP IP optical automation and how it can help simplify your day-to-day -day tasks and save you money. The evolution and integration of IP and optical transport infrastructure is a critical success factor because uh, this is an area that continues to be dominated by operational silos. And these silos hold back innovations and improvements that can be brought to bear on both the planning and the operating functions. Operators will often rely on multiple teams and experts assigned to specialist functions within a layer. Particularly in large, well-staffed network operations groups, the person who starts investigating IP failures is often not the one who does troubleshooting in the optical domain. And in smaller installations, a single person may attempt to troubleshoot the entire network using disparate, uh, different disparate tools. In either case, better coordination and tools can improve operational efficiency and network availability. This gap has been further exasperated with the introduction of 400ZR, which we're going to get into in later uh, in the discussion. Over the years, there's been a, an ongoing effort to address these coordination issues. And even though SDN is an overused term, we believe that SDN-based solutions enabled by open interfaces such as TAPI have matured to the point where IP optical integration is achievable in multi-vendor environments. This new multi-layer coordination capability allows the introduction of a new mode of operation that unlocks various cost synergies, such as multi-layer protection and restoration, and improve visibility and control of the IP optical network, even in multi-vendor environments. These benefits contribute to service quality, velocity, and efficiency, really all of the advantages that are very difficult to realize with disjoint IP optical domains. Now I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about 400ZR and how our management solution is a little different than the others out there. I'd like to describe, uh, I like to describe the management requirements as a gradient, depending on the span and the type of transceiver that you're using. This can range from the simplest gray optic or unamplified 400ZR link through DWDM point-to-point -point connections, all the way to a fully featured mix of transponders and ZR plugs. Let's start with the gray optic for short reaches, for example, uh, you know, to a transponder. There's not much to it. It's on or off. Uh, there's, there are no power levels. You've either got a link or you don't. This is built into your current management system, and everyone has that. And even as you move into plugs with variable power, like a ZR and an unamplified application, this is still pretty simple. And you might even use a CLI, depending on the number of links. But when you start to get into DWDM applications, even with a simple photom, you're going to need maybe a channel plan. Uh, you still need an easy way to validate that the link is operational, ideally through a dashboard. And finally, depending on the channel count and placement of the channels, you might need a power ramp function to avoid affecting ex existing channels when new ones are added. Uh, this is where the autom having automation capabilities can be very useful, providing a foolproof, consistent method for managing the lifecycle of your ZR links. So as we go beyond the single span, let's look at multiple spans. Here, in addition to the automation we just discussed, you're going to require optical channel monitoring and active power management to avoid crosstalk penalties. Contributions at the OIF have shown that you want to keep adjacent channels to within 1 dB of each other. Using the NSP, you can reliably handle large channel count, de channel count deployments. And as we move to even longer reaches that include ROM and pumps, the need for dynamic gain equalization, or DGE, is required, adding further complexity to the management story. Finally, when ZR links are deployed as part of a lowest TCO architecture that includes DCOs, transponders, and rotums, perhaps as a part of a brownfield network, you want to have the native optical controller handle the complex functions such as power management, PCE. This is another area where NSP is uniquely positioned and differentiated from other vendors. NSP is an integrated solution that simplifies the workflows associated with provisioning services, seamlessly building on the specialized capabilities of the optical controller when it's needed. 
All of this is done, again, through the standard interface such as TAPI. So if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this presentation today, it's that managing 400 ZR connections in any configuration or any architecture is simple and it's flexible when using NanSP. We approach the lifecycle management of the ZR link in the same way as uh, we approach all services in NanSP, and that's through Intense. And if you're not familiar with Intense, in its simplest form, it's all about describing what you want out of the network rather than how it gets implemented. Whether you're dealing with a lower reach point to point or a linear connection that requires DGE, the NSP can manage these with a common workflow and a single pane of glass in a model driven fashion. And when an optical controller is in, in the mix uh, for hybrid deployments, including transponders, the NSP integrates the end to end link management, avoiding alien wavelengths. So I want to briefly introduce a new optical line product being uh, it is coming this year called the PSICL, which is a compact line system that's model driven and optimized for 400 ZR links. The NSP can manage this line system in a model driven approach for all elements of the link, avoiding alien wavelengths. This simplifies control and management and locks all of the NSP capabilities, including fault management and network supervision. So how is 400ZR going to work with open line systems? In an open line system environment, NSP uses uh, the OpenTAPI interface to discover new ZR topologies and services and allow for new service creation using Intents. Assurance is accomplished through network supervision and in a single pane of glass you have access to ZR connections in the context of a multi-layer view uh, with easily displayed optical parameters such as channel, power level, and prefix bit error ratios. So what you see here uh, are a few planned screenshots that give you a flavor of what will be available with the 400ZR feature set. You can see on the top shot the uh, integration of the ZR link, um, which traverses an optical domain. And in the second screenshot, you can see a depiction of the ZR parameters as they would appear on an NSP dashboard. Again, the network visualization is intended to be clear, easy to use, and intuitive. Now, I touched on it a little earlier uh, in, in the presentation, but what you see here is a screenshot of the intent manager showing a few sample pre-configured intents. For example, you can see an intent called test ZR at the bottom, indicating that there's an intent that is ready to be used to establish a new ZR link. From this screen, you can also edit the existing intents or create new ones. Diving a little deeper into the intent manager, these screenshots are showing you how the intent is edited to create, uh, to create default values for the ZR parameters. You'll notice that the intent itself is based on a Yang model of the link and that the editing form is actually auto-generated from that model. Once the intent has been modified, the network is synchronized ensuring that you have a single source of truth related to that ZR link configuration in the NSP database. Last screenshot here, just to show you that in addition to the rich network map visualizations available in the network supervision app, you also have a full inventory available in the equipment tree. Here you'll find all the information you need in, uh, on, the, on the plugs, including manufacturer details, part numbers, serial numbers, um, and all equipment details. Lastly, I'd like to quickly touch on the work that has been done in the past year regarding interoperability with third-party optical controllers. Late last year, we participated in the OIF's multi-vendor transport SDN interop uh, event that occurred in uh, Telefonica Labs in Spain. As part of that interop, we were in the lab with Siena, Adva, and Infinera and demonstrated interoperability around the TAPI interface. As mentioned earlier, Earlier, Nokia is a leading contributor to the ONF TAPI standard, and we're committed to broadening the functional content and the real life deployments using that standard. Well, I hope that's all. I hope you found this to be useful, and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks.